Let's talk about all this with Kaveh Afrosiabi. He joins us live from Boston. He advised Iran's nuclear negotiating team. He's also a former consultant to the United Nations. His next book, out in September, is entitled Iran Nuclear Accord and the Remaking of the Middle East. Kaveh, welcome to the program. Thank you. First, I'd like to get your reaction to these new sanctions announced by the U.S. Treasury Department. I'm reading here targeting 16 entities and individuals for supporting what it says is illicit Iranian actors or transnational criminal activity. And let me again add, this has nothing to do with the nuclear agreement reached with P5 plus 1. Well, I completely agree with the last part of your statement. And many uh, experts, non-proliferation experts, also think that Iran's uh, conventional missiles are an important part of the country's deterrent force. And Iran will therefore never abandon it, no matter what the U.S. pressure, which is not shared, by the way, by any other Western government. And you see the inaction of the Europeans, for example. So the U.S. is really engaging in a unilateral gambit against Iran that can potentially jeopardize the very precious Iran nuclear deal that is very important for regional peace and stability. And hopefully, you know, with the second confirmation by the uh, U.S. of Iran's comp compliance with the nuclear deal, uh, the Trump administration will slow down on its very express train of uh, Iran hostility. And there's a meeting in Vienna in a couple of days where both sides can air their grievances with respect to the issues of compliance with the nuclear nuclear accord. And Iran has its own well, long me, list of complaints. Let me ask you about this meeting that you just mentioned. Will that involve a meeting between Foreign Minister Javad Zarif and U.S. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson? Because from what I understand, from what Zarif said yesterday, the two have not met. That's right. And they will not meet, in my opinion, for the foreseeable future. However, the deputies are in Vienna, and there's continuing dialogue between the U.S. and Iran on the technical aspect of the nuclear deal. And uh, there's a joint commission covering the issues of compliance and non-compliance. And we had an earlier one uh, in New York. And this one in Vienna is very important from Iranian point of view, because uh, as we know, President Trump recently at the G20 summit and so forth lobbied uh, Europeans against doing business with Iran, which goes against the very letter and the spirit of the Iran nuclear agreement. Is Iran concerned at some point, even though President Trump says Tehran is complying with the nuclear accord, is there concern um, in Iran that perhaps the U.S. would pull out of the nuclear agreement and if it does, what does that mean for Iran? And what does it mean for the European countries and EU that are involved in this? World powers, I should say. Well, uh, there's definitely a growing concern in Iran that uh, with all these you know, expressions of anti-Iran hostilities by the Trump administrations, as well as the US Congress with pending legislation, uh, the, the, there's an attrition of US commitment to the JCPOA, which over time may unravel the whole agreement, uh, which would really, uh, you know, spell doom for a lot of uh, peace and stability issues, because there's a great deal of diplomatic work that has gone into making that, as you know. And, uh, you know, the non-proliferation issue is of paramount importance. And right now, all the pathways for fissile material for Iran, you know, nuclear bomb are blocked. And if this nuclear deal is vanished, you know, there's, there's going to be new concerns about Iranian Let, proliferation. We're running out of time, so I want to talk about trust. When I interviewed Foreign Minister Javad Zarif a few years ago, before the nuclear agreement was signed, he really emphasized how important it was to build trust between the United States and Iran. How important or how much of an issue is that with this new administration, especially at a time Iran is holding a number of American citizens? Well, yes, and uh, in his talk at the Council on Foreign Relations just last night, uh, Foreign Minister Zarif reiterated the importance of bilateral dialogue and how he actually misses what he had with the uh, 
the Secretary Tillerson's predecessor, John Kerry. And uh, I, I think that the signals that are sent by Iran toward the U.S. are on the whole very positive. And uh, hopefully the uh, Trump administration will t interpret them correctly and reciprocate. And, you know, the issue of the few I Iranian Americans held in Iran is also something that can be discussed bilaterally and hopefully resolved. All right. We'll have to leave it there. Kaveh Afro Siabi, thank you so much, sir, for your time. My pleasure.